West Whiteland Police saw the video and arrested Johnson LaRose and Charlotte Fisher for criminal trespassing and conspiracy. Now at the end of this video, I'm going to share with you guys two of the craziest things that happened to me when I was in jail because I did like eight months. Wasn't worth it. Food was terrible. Let's do this. These are 10 YouTubers who have spent time behind bars and we're going to list them from three hours in jail to 50 years in prison. Damn! Beginning with Sam Pepper and Ice Poseidon who got arrested together for the dumbest reason imaginable. Back in mid-2018, Sam and Ice had the genius idea of hiding in a purple wooden Fortnite llama on wheels so they could sneak past security into VidCon where they'd stay and film a 24-hour overnight challenge. Everything seemed to be going well in the beginning as Sam and Ice cruised into the convention while filming and laughing at security through a little peephole. However, the two seemed to forget that they were live streaming to thousands of people and it would only take one call to VidCon to have their whole plan shut down. This call would happen less than 10 minutes after getting inside, which was followed by security and police walking straight up to them before they'd be arrested. Go and step out. Yeah. Come on, fella. Oh, uh, what is all this? The two were taken back to the police station, banned from VidCon for life, and given a notice to appear in court, which eventually resulted in a further two years probation, $100 in fines, and 80 hours of community service. For what? Being inside of a Fortnite-shaped pinata at VidCon? They didn't have guns or nothing! I don't understand! Sam Pepper and Ice Poseidon's arrest was short-sighted and idiotic. However, it still wasn't as stupid as the time Logan Paul was sent to jail for a whole day after getting arrested in Italy. It happened back in 2017 when Logan was in his obnoxious vlogger phase, and prior to the arrest, Logan's group had disrespected Italian norms, gotten kicked out of hotels, and had filmed locals without their permission. So by the time the group made it to Italy's famous Colosseum, they were bound to get into trouble. Logan began by stating that he knew flying a drone over the Colosseum was illegal, I understand uh, drone shots here are illegal, so let's definitely do that. However, after putting the drone in the air anyway, the military were able to capture it. I found it. Ellipsis. Military has it. And Logan was arrested shortly thereafter. Fly of a drone yeah. in this uh, area is illegal. No bueno. We must uh, arrest you for this. Okay. After being released from jail later that afternoon, Logan was straight back to his idiotic self. Yo, Rima! I'm a savage, bro. Read my boy, Logan. Ah! You can't stop, Logan! Ah! And if anything, seemed proud of what had happened. I went to jail, bro. I went, I've been in jail, bro. While Logan did have to spend a full day behind bars, his punishment wasn't nearly as bad as Sniper Wolf's, who after being charged with armed robbery, had to spend multiple nights in jail. What? It happened back in 2013 before Sniper Wolf became a big YouTuber, and the incident was explained in a video appropriately titled My Jail Story. She explained that while shopping at a department store, she was asked by security to check her bag, yet since Sniper Wolf didn't want this to happen, she pushed the security guard and ran back to her car. He stopped me, asked for my bag, and pulled it from me. I didn't know what to do. I just ran away and got in my car. Sniper Wolf seemed confident that she didn't actually have anything in her bag. I didn't even steal anything and they had no proof I did. Yet under the assumption that she was running because she'd stolen something, Sniper Wolf was arrested later that day. They took me to the police station jail. They took mug shots and they asked us a ton of questions. She was then charged with armed robbery. I was charged with armed robbery. How? They said it wasn't official charges. They could just pretty much charge us whatever they they want right now. Before she'd be sent to a larger jail complex, where she remained for three days before being released. I was in jail for almost three days. Yet this wouldn't be the last time that Sniper Wolf ended up behind bars. Because three years later, Sniper Wolf would take to Twitter to make a new post reading, so neighbors called the cops cause they heard screaming, and I got arrested for disorderly conduct, lol at my mugshot though. This post was followed by a video simply titled Arrested, in which Sniper Wolf explained that she'd been taken to jail for the night after getting into a petty fight with her boyfriend. So of course, I was screaming. I was screaming. I got arrested for disorderly conduct. So apparently, you're not allowed to scream in your own house. <laughs> and while it definitely feels like Snipe Wolf isn't telling the full story about both of her jail terms, there's definitely no- I knew she looked like somebody who is abusive to her boyfriend, bro. God, jeez. Yes, yeah, she looked low-key toxic, bro. It feels like Snipe Wolf isn't telling the full story about both of her jail terms. There's definitely no missing details for the next YouTuber who was sentenced to 15 months in prison for playing a prank on a homeless person. 
person. Back in 2017, a Spanish creator with over a million subscribers called Reset thought it would be a good idea to take the filling out of an Oreo, replace it with toothpaste and give it to a homeless person. Despite stating that the toothpaste filled Oreo would help the homeless man clean his teeth, the community began to destroy Reset, creating a 125,000 signature petition to have his channel deleted, which accompanied a 19 million view video by Auron Play titled Reset the Most Stupid on Internet. However, Reset's worst punishment was still yet to come, as after the homeless man's daughter noticed the backlash on the internet, she'd take legal action against the YouTuber and Reset ended up in court. The judge, Rosa Aragones, noted that it was not an isolated event and the social media star had a propensity for cruel behavior and preying on easily or vulnerable victims. She found him guilty of violating the man's moral integrity. Damn. Reset was sentenced to 15 months in prison and was ordered to pay 20,000 euros to the homeless man. Damn. Reset also received a five year ban from all social media with this sentence commencing in June 2019, meaning he'll be able to return to YouTube in June 2024, although certainly with a downtrodden reputation. Beamscore was another million plus subscriber channel who managed to land themselves in prison, although for an even longer time than Reset. The two owners of the family channel, Billy and Eva, were often seen on social media with luxury cars and extravagant homes, yet it turns out that not all of their money had been made through their YouTube channel. Because on the 23rd of February 2020, they'd upload a video titled, We Kept This A Secret Long Enough, We Were Arrested, in which they'd explained that they had a court date for an unspecified charge. Yes, we were arrested and we have a very important date. We have a sentencing date. That will change our lives forever for the good or for the bad. A month later, it was revealed that the couple were being accused of identity theft and defrauding the government, having accessed or attempted to access social security accounts belonging to over 1,400 different individuals without the victim's knowledge or authorization. Stealing identities to, you know, to make money. That was my hustle back then. I knew what I was doing was wrong, but it was just, I needed a way to make money. The couple explained that all of this had happened five years prior to beginning YouTube, although this didn't seem to matter to the judge, who said sentenced the couple to three years in prison. I got two years and Yvonne got one year. I got a year and a day. She has a year and a day. As well as ordered them to pay back the $94,000 that they had stolen. That's in true it. family channel fashion, they then used their time in prison as clickbait for content, yet this behavior wasn't nearly as bad as Russian YouTuber Ruslan Sokolovsky, who was sentenced to three and a half years in prison for playing Pokemon Go in a church. What? In early August 2016, Sokolovsky filmed a video of himself catching Pokemon in Yekaterinburg's Church on Blood. The video stirred up a controversy among believers while a criminal case was initiated in accordance with the Russian Criminal Code's articles, citing incitement to hatred and enmity, denigrating human dignity, as well as violating the right to freedom of conscience and religion. The alleged crime, playing Pokemon Go inside an Orthodox church. Sokolovsky shared a YouTube video that showed him playing the smartphone game. His video went viral and prompted a police investigation. Officials said the video was one of many by the young blogger that questioned or criticized the church. In May 2017, approximately Approximately one year after posting the Pokemon Go video, Rosalind was handed a 3.5 year suspended prison term, and while his 500,000 subscriber YouTube channel is pretty much dead these days, he's still yet to spend any time behind bars. Jens the Beast had a harsher sentence than anyone else on this list so far, although he was actually able to use YouTube to improve his reputation after getting out of prison. Jens the Beast explained that his life began to spiral out of control following the death of his mother at the age of 24. He was sent to prison for the first time back in 2009 after getting into an altercation with the nightclub bouncer, yet after finishing this first prison stint, he was sent back two more times totaling four years spent behind bars. During his final stint, Jens made the decision to get his life together. The last prison sentence that I got, I used a lot of my time finding myself with cognitive therapy and anger management, stuff like that, so I cleared up my mind, decided that I'm not going back. And after being released from prison, he launched his own coaching program before joining Rich Piano's 5% Nutrition Group, and with the assistance of YouTube and Instagram, Jens was able to turn his life around completely. Less than three years ago, I was released from prison and now I got two companies going, working with clients all over the world and doing expos and got so many fans and followers. So just, I'm really, really grateful. However, while Jens is certainly one of the scariest looking people on the platform, his four years in prison still seems minor when compared to Saucy and Honey, who are facing a seven year sentence for a YouTube prank. This may have been fun for those YouTubers, but tonight they're facing some serious felony charges and up to 
seven years in jail. In February 2022, the 25,000 subscriber channel posted a video titled 24 hour overnight challenge in Target. We are about to spend the night in Target. We're gonna spend overnight in Target. After introducing the video, the two would hide in the store and wait for it to close. They then walk around filming themselves before walking out in the morning, stating that they had been there all night. We successfully completed our overnight challenge in Target. The video went up like any other. However, the couple was arrested after the video was watched by police. West Whiteland police saw the video and arrested Johnson LaRose and Charlotte Fisher for criminal trespassing and conspiracy. Criminal trespass was a felony in the third degree. They're not they're not entitled to be there, um, so th which makes it a crime. Not only did the news expose their challenge as fake, using security camera footage which showed them leaving the store at 3 a.m., but after being arrested, the two were charged with criminal trespassing, conspiracy, and are now facing up to seven years in prison. However, seven years is still nothing when compared to Wes Watson, whose 10 years in prison acted as a basis for him to become a multi-multi-millionaire. Now, Wes was already a millionaire prior to entering prison. However, this money had been earned via illegal activity and would therefore also become the reason for his time behind bars. After 10 years in the California prison system, Wes decided that he was ready to get his life together and instead of taking on a normal post-prison job, he instead created a YouTube channel titled GP Penitentiary Life Wes Watson, where he began to tell stories about what prison was really like. His ideal prison-like image helped all of his videos to explode in popularity. So I went on that YouTube channel and it blew up. Every video got millions of views. I got 100,000 subscribers in 28 days. And with his physique also being in a very enviable position from his time away, Wes sold fitness programs and coaching via his social media channels. Wes also put out a book and only three years after being released from prison, Wes had once again become a multi-millionaire. That's why I've been able to make myself a millionaire and stay fit this quick. Three years after doing 10 years in prison. Everybody told me, Wes, get a real job. Like, how are you going to support a family online coaching? Right. Ah! Which accompanied a whole new series of videos in which Wes preaches the importance of good habits in the most brutally honest way possible. You will have zero value in your life. Zero worth if you don't put the work in. If you crack that bottle and think it's going to do it, massive downside. Hey, look at me. I'm having so much fun. We know how you look in the morning throwing up in the toilet, looking at your bank account all. However, while prison led Wes Watson to become a successful motivational speaker, for the final YouTuber on our list, the opposite happened and being a motivational speaker led him into prison. He was a Mexican YouTuber by the name of Jaman Loera MX and as mentioned previously, he was known for posting motivational and business content to his channel with over 5,000 subscribers. However, instead of engaging in legitimate business practice, Jaman instead decided to make money by kidnapping someone and holding them for a $100,000 ransom. What? Two days after doing so, he was caught by police and was sentenced to 50 years in prison where he remains to this day. Note to self, don't kidnap people for money. You just go to jail for 50 years. And he didn't even get the money more than likely. All right, so tell you guys one of my jail prison stories. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I was in jail, but it, it felt like prison because we were on 23 hour lockdown. They fed us breakfast at 3 a.m., lunch at 8 a.m., and dinner at like 1 p.m., which I'm pretty sure you can guess by like 5 p.m. You're so hungry, you got to buy commissary. So my bunk mate was like this 18 year old super duper skinny kid who went to jail like three days after he turned 18 because, you know, he wanted to be cool like his gang banging friends and he went with them to go rob a store for some clothes, like a Macy's or something. And they all got caught. He got a couple years or something. You know what I mean? So when you eat breakfast, you're not allowed to sit with who you want to sit it with. You have to sit with the people that are close to you in the line. So we all sit down, man. We eat our food. My bunk mate, he opens up up his plate and this wannabe gangbanger dude at our table he's like yo 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 give me your food play with me bro give me your food now i wasn't really my bunk mate's friend but he would tell me his stories of the dumb stuff he would do so that kind of made me feel like we were kind of friends you know what i'm saying and i hear that it's good etiquette to take up for your cellmate, your bunkmate. Now, of course I didn't know that. I just don't like watching people get bullied because I got bullied a lot as a child. The gangbanger dude, he was a crip. He looked at the homie who, the real skinny homie, and the homie opens up his styrofoam tray so he can look at his food. The gangbanger dude's like, yo, 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 hey, give me your breakfast. My cellmate, he's just like, he's like, wait, what? He's thinking it's a joke or something. Gangbanger's like, no, 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 no. 
Give me your food, bro. I ain't playing with you, bro. I'm going to punch you out. And of course, I'm not one to really jump into people's issues or whatever. My cellmate, he looks at me. I'm like the only close person there to him. You know what I'm saying? I'm his only homie. So he looks at me. He's like, yo, like, when he looks at me, I tell him, bro, go ahead and eat your food, bro. You good. When I say that to him, he opens his tray back up and he gets ready to you know, stick his fork into the crappy looking food that they had given us because the food was awful. But when he does that, the gangbanger dude is like, yo, I said, bro, don't open that up, man. What are you doing, bro? Hey, I don't slide me your food. So when he said that, I say to the game, I'm like, bro, look, stall him out, bro. Dude, don't be doing that, bro. Let him eat his food, bro. Keep tripping, bro. You already got food, bro. Eat yours. When I say that, game banger dude stands up. What the f you just say to me, bro? I'll whoop you out, blah, 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 blah. So when he start tripping, bro, I get up. I'm like, man, what's up then, my Like, what's up? I square up on homie. I get closer. Like, yo, what's up then, yo? When I stood up, homie, he sit back down. Man, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm like, man, you fucking, come on, man. Bro, first of all, you're going to pick on the 110-pound dude, the smallest dude in the whole jail. He's built like an anorexic 12-year-old, bro. Moral of that story is, bro, if you ever have to go to jail, do not try to act tough. Someone who's probably not me is going to show you what it really do, and it ain't going to be what you want. Second story is when I first got into jail, they put us up in the holding tank, right? Now, when you in the holding tank, man, we was up in there with 20 other people, hella crowded, not a lot of room for anything, but they brought food in there to feed us. So when they brought all the food up in there, they gave us these individual styrofoam trays that kind of looked like Panda Express to-go boxes. We all start eating our food, bro. And this one fat black dude starts walking around and pressing people for their food. Just robbing them of their trays, bro. But again, he's only doing it to the people that didn't look like they could fight back. After he steals like six trays of food, this big, yoked up dude who's about this guy's size, he stands up. Bro, if you don't sit down and eat your food, I'm going to kill you. Y'all know how I'm Naruto where they always talk about killing intent, where Ruchimaru first fought Sasuke, and everybody could feel Ruchimaru's killing intent. And just Ruchimaru's killing intent, he stunned all of the students that was about to fight him. Bro, that's what happened to me and every other dude in there. Everything stopped. I'm just sitting there like... And the dude who had been walking around stealing people's trays, a fat black dude, he shut the fuck up, gave everybody their trays back, and sat down and didn't say anything else. The dude was really going to kill him. No one would have helped him either. That's why it sucks to be a bully. Because when you finally run into a bully who's bigger than you, who's with the shits, no one's going to help. No one's going to save you. No one's got your back. No one's going to call the police for you. All we're going to do is film and laugh. He felt the killing intent so much so that he set his fat rabbit ass down and just started eating his own tray and gave everybody else their trays back. Apologize, my bad, bro. I was just, my bad, my bad. Picking on the weak is not worth it, people. It is just an L waiting to happen. But picking on bullies is, is a W because no one ever is going to help them, bro. Like, it's going to get jacked up. But yo, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys enjoyed these two stories. Make sure to comment, like, and don't subscribe. A link to my story times is in the description down below if y'all want to hear some of the crazy ratchetry that culminates in someone as debonair as I do. Mm. Twisms!